<laughs> I can't really do that because it'd be way too much uh, shake, but I was going to do the finger snap thing. Actually, yeah, I, I might do that sometime in the middle of the video just for you guys. Uh, anyway, I am out with the K3 Mark III and the 150 450. Uh, yeah, with the 150 450 and 1.4 time teleconverter, so a focal length of 630 millimeters. Um, yeah, some interesting stuff. So, as I'm sure you're aware, I do currently have the uh, FA Star 600 f4 lens. Um, yeah, that's not a very convenient lens to have or to use. Well, I shouldn't say to have, but it's not a convenient lens to use. Uh, reason being is it weighs 16 pounds. So you really need to plan it out if you're going to take that with you. Uh, you know, you really need to plan it out. You really need to make sure that wherever you're going, you're not going to be moving around too much. Because uh, it is definitely, I mean, I can handhold it here and there for a short period of time. Uh, other than that, you really do need to uh, use a gimbal uh, and a tripod. So it's not the most portable, easy, convenient lens to use. Uh, so it started making me think, what's the 150 plus the HD 1.4 teleconverter like? Well, comparing them back to back, the 150 is way higher image quality. It's way sharper. Uh, you know, the FA Star, you have to understand, it is a very old lens. Um, you know, so on film cameras, it would be great. Digital, it's okay. Uh, you know, but the one thing I did notice, it's similar to the 55-300 PLM, where distant subjects really don't render that well. And the copy that I have, there seems to be a fair bit of ghosting at, uh, you know, pretty far distances. Uh, no matter what. The 150-450 doesn't have that issue uh, in comparison. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm at a spot here called McLaughlin Bay. Uh, actually had an interesting interesting uh, interaction when I first arrived here. Uh, I was stopped by security as soon as I parked where the visitor's parking is supposed to be. And uh, yeah, so apparently General Motors is storing all the unfinished trucks from the chip shortage at their head office. And right behind the head office, uh, this is for General Motors Canada, uh, and right behind the head office is the entrance to McLaughlin Bay, which is owned by them. It's a public space. Uh, so yeah, I went to go park my car and security showed up out of nowhere. <laughs> Not quite like that. Um, you know, asked me what I was doing. I pulled out the camera and he's like, oh, taking photos? Looks around at all the trucks. Oh, why are you taking photos of the trucks? I'm like, I don't care about the trucks, man. I'm going to McLaughlin Bay. It's like, oh, well, you can't park here. Uh, th there's a dirt road you can access at the end. You have to go there. So I had to walk all the way around because the entrance where I was looking for is literally <laughs> right in front of the building where I parked. Uh, but anyway, all right, let's... Uh, Hang out here in regards to some wildlife stuff. Uh, I see a swan, some other things happening around here. You can hear some birds here and there. Um, but generally speaking, the joys of wildlife is uh, just get to a spot and hang out for a while and hope that uh, the magic happens, basically. So I'm not going to bore you with that. I'll just uh, take some shots and uh, talk about the experience after. All right, so just to give you an idea, um, I'm using high light weighted metering on the K3 Mark III. And as you can see, uh, I've got it strapped to my side uh, with the 150-450. And uh, the strap that I'm using, this is, this is the best strap ever. Oh man, this is, a, this is like a godsend. Uh, basically, it's the Peak Design, well, not basically, it is the Peak Design slide strap. Um, I mean, holding the 150 450 like this is practically weightless. Um, I can walk around all day with it at my side, always ready to just pick it up and shoot. It's fantastic, absolutely fantastic, and I highly recommend. If you're looking for a strap, if you have a long telephoto lens, this is the strap to get. Even with the 600 f4, I can easily carry it around. 
the only issue with the 600 f4 is when you actually go to pick it up to use it because it weighs you know a thousand pounds <laughs> uh but yeah um as you can see i mean it's uh it's pretty open wilderness all around here um but there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of activity right now there we go that's what you were waiting for i know all right uh so hours later um i didn't want to bore you with that video footage i literally i walked uh you know sometimes it's better to just not let your curiosity get the best of you so there was a section uh further away and i was like oh i wonder what's over there so i decided i would make a gander and walk all the way over there and i got you know wasted oh, probably about 20 minutes or so to get to the one side and uh yeah there was nothing nothing so another 20 minutes to walk back to where i already was so i mean anyway hours and hours later finally came across uh an area that was swarming with swallows I have been trying for years to get swallows, like in flight, action, something. Uh, they were tree swallows, beautiful, beautiful birds, absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah, so I was able to get these guys and uh, it, it was quite interesting. Uh, the, the, you know, just the whole, just watching them was quite, quite impressive. Uh, they didn't get along, and then uh, this heron actually just happened to fly by as well. Uh, there were there were a couple of swans. Uh, they look like trumpeter swans, and um, one uh, was juvenile, had a tag on it, but uh, it's where it was flying. I couldn't actually get a decent shot of it. Um, you know, it was coming in and out of uh, behind brush and things like that. Um, and I just happened to see it. I didn't have time to set up the camera with autofocus hold and all that stuff. It was like immediate, either get the shot or it's gone. So I did what I could, but it didn't come out. So I'm not going to post that one. Um, but the, the swallows was part of my bucket list. I, I, I'm very happy that I was able to actually get these guys. Um, my next bucket list thing is going to be getting them actually like getting them closer because these are all cropped getting them closer in flight that's going to be my next challenge might take another few years to actually be able to pull that off but these are the photos i was able to get and with the 15450 and the 1.4 time teleconverter compared to the 600 f4 yeah it's a night and day difference the 1.4 teleconverter mounted to the 15450 is absolutely phenomenal i was not expecting the quality of images to be this good color rendition contrast sharpness it's it is a very 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 good combination um uh, the next thing i'm probably going to try out is the 55 300 plm with uh the 1.4 teleconverter just to see how that actually fares as well uh you know in regards to the channel that would be a more affordable combination obviously than the 15450 plus 1.4 time teleconverter so uh, i am gonna take a look at that um but right now it's very very dark and overcast out so so much for that but my thoughts on the 15450 and 1.4 time teleconverter yeah until i do the video with the 55300 plm and the 1.4 time teleconverter that teleconverter is going to remain on the 15450 period it's it, it's amazing it, it's amazing if you do have the 15450 i highly recommend you do get the 1.4 teleconverter it works out to uh 630 millimeter focal length so 600 f4 at 16 pounds versus I don't know what 4.5872 pounds <laughs> for uh, the 15450 and 1.4 time teleconverter. Yeah, the 15450 and the teleconverter does actually make more sense. And that's it for uh, this video. If you like it, leave a like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Helps me out. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down there in the comment area below. 
If you want to support the channel, that information is down there too, in the description, in, in the description, not the comments. And that's it. I'm going to go. You'll see me in my next video. I'm out.